Welcome to a month in the Kruger. This is Punda Maria. Final drive now from Shingwedzi as we head uh, north to Punda Maria, which is the northernmost camp in the park. I spoke to uh, a couple yesterday who said they'd seen wild dogs the yesterday morning, so we went hunting for those this morning, heading south first, but uh, no joy. Doesn't look as if our luck's in for wild dogs or leopards, but we're still going around the loops at the moment, uh, looking for a leopard or anything else. We actually left a bit later this morning. Um, none of these half past five starts. I actually saw more in the first 10 minutes than we usually do in the first like hour and a half. So maybe that's a lesson learned. Leave a bit later. Uh, certainly in the north anyway.
Well, we've been looking for a leopard for the last three days and we finally found one. On our morning drive this morning, just spotted one just crossing the river. Walked across the river, had a look on this side and then walked back again across to the other side. We've been following a procession of cars all morning and uh, every single one of them drove by. Even the cars stopped behind us, uh, had a look and couldn't see anything and, and drove by. Which shows you just how difficult it is to spot wildlife in the, in the Kruger. We were the only people who were actually to see that leopard at this particular time, despite half a dozen cars driving by. So our luck was in. Could we hope for some more? I don't know. Let's find out. This is Punda Maria where we're staying for three nights. Uh, quite familiar with this accommodation because this is the first camp we ever stayed in in the Kruger back in 2017 and we stayed in uh, one of these safari tents. As I remember it was the best best accommodation of that trip. So let's have a look. And this is a true safari tent unlike uh, Lower Sabi which was Really just a, a concrete bunker with some cameras around it. You get this lovely deck. 
and then you've got an outside kitchen here you can see it and uh, nice seating area sun's a bit bright at the moment got a braai on there if you need it and you've got this lovely view um, and then we've got to find the key oh, it's a very compact little tent with uh, just the two double beds well no two single beds but uh, makes one huge double and then uh, there's another one with the fridge inside and through here you've got uh, a little storage place and I think probably yep toilet in there and I should think the shower this side that's it basin and a shower That's all you need, that'll be quite nice. And what I love about these uh, safari tents at Ponda Maria is, is this balcony. This, uh, this really feels like Africa. Right, let's go and get all the uh, cases and stuff in. And I'll walk back to the car. As I mentioned earlier, this is the northernmost main camp in the park. There is another camp a little bit further north, Pafuri Border Camp, but that's uh, a luxury camp there with, with just a couple of big guest houses. We did stay there back in 2017 and it really was luxury, but it's quite pricey. This was the first uh, camp that we stayed in when we first came to the Kruger in April 2017. We came that time with a guided uh, tour, or a safari guide private tour, and uh, that really gave us the ins and outs of the park and gave us the confidence to come back uh, on our own. Certainly learned a lot from that, but uh, being on your own and finding out things for yourself uh, is, to my mind, a lot better. Out of all the camps we've stayed in over the the four visits now that we've been, uh, I still think that this uh, safari tent here is the best accommodation. It's, uh, it really does feel like you're in the wild and in Africa. And we're right on the uh, border fence here, overlooking uh, the shrub outside. Could get a few animals, but uh, it's a little bit overgrown for that. And the area around Punta Maria is uh, more known for birding than uh, animal sightings. Um, but I think we're probably at the wrong time of the year because we haven't seen a great number of birds uh, as we've been travelling about. Certainly not as many as we normally see in September or October. But you never know, um, there could be a lot more birds up here. Um, we might find something rare like a Pell's fishing owl. But we just wait and see what happens. The worst comes to the worst it's a nice relaxing place and uh, apparently they've got a bird hide uh, down by the campsite which i've never been to so we'll take a look down there and uh, see if there's anything down there meanwhile we're just settled in for on our first afternoon glass of amarula and uh, we hope that in the next three days we'll bring something special i'll bring everything to you as and when I can. Cheers. This afternoon, instead of going for a drive, because there's very limited uh, roads around here, I thought I'd do something different and uh, go around the uh, fly catcher trail, which is a, a trail just around the edge of the camp. Should end up back at the uh, 
or back at the main camp and then I'll go down to the bird hide and check that out. It actually makes a difference to be walking. Interesting to see what the trees are. goes right up to the border fence so uh, beyond here be wild animals be careful Well, it's quite an interesting little trial, a bit up and down, but a bit rocky, but not too bad. I took my uh, big lens on my heavy camera and my video camera with me, but uh, bizarrely, didn't see a single bird or any other living creature apart from a butterfly. That's rather odd. I didn't even hear any birds, so this time of the year must be very strange. It should be much more lively than this. Let's go and see what the bird hide has. This is the campground at uh, Ponda Maria. It looks very nice. Lots of private pitches in the trees. Well, the bird hide turned out to have an absolutely splendid view and I spent the rest of the afternoon watching the baboons playing.
This morning on our first drive from Punta Maria we're heading to Pafuri and to Crooks Corner which is as far north as you can go in the Kruger National Park. But first we've called into the bird hide at uh, the campground at Punta Maria which overlooks a waterhole. This surely must be the best uh, waterhole and bird hide in the entire Kruger. In this part of the park you get to see many more of the amazing baobab trees, some of which may be over a thousand years old. We're on the S63 now, heading towards Crook's Corner. Along this road it's less about the wildlife than about the amazing scenery, which is completely different to any other part of the park.
Well, this is Crook's Corner, the uh, most northerly point you can go in the Kruger National Park. This is actually the confluence of three countries. You've got uh, across the river there is Mozambique. Just up on this side is Zimbabwe. And we're in South Africa. And it's the second time in the last few weeks that we've actually been at the confluence of uh, three countries. Back in the Halahadi, we were at the border of Botswana, Namibia and South Africa. This is the Limpopo River. I think last time we were here this was virtually empty. It was uh, just a trickle. Legend has it that this is called Crook's Corner because it was an uh, escape point from uh, the police either in Mozambique or in South Africa. So that if you got near the border you could actually uh, escape quite easily. What the legend doesn't explain is uh, how you're going to escape across a crocodile infested river. Maybe that just spoils the actual legend. A few crocodiles out there. For the time being we've got Crook's Corner to ourselves but uh, that probably won't be for long. So we'll have a brief rest here before turning back through the uh, forest. The amazing thing about this part of the Kruger is that it's totally different than anywhere else. Um, it's all about the trees, the incredible baobab trees, the fever trees, all sorts of uh, different vegetation. As expected there wasn't a lot of wildlife on the way but uh, we did see a small herd of Inyala which uh, are much more common up here than the further south and quite a few zebra. There haven't been that many birds. Um, again it must be this time of the year um, because this is supposed to be teeming with birds um, year round. We retrace our steps now and take the long journey back to the camp. It gives us another chance to see all those beautiful trees. This is Pafuri picnic spot, one of the nicest picnic spots in the park. Wind's got up now so uh, any birds here are going to be hanging off a dear life. right on the banks of the river. I think this again is the Limpopo. Uh, not quite sure, it might be the Luvalu or some, whatever that's called. There you go, a very quick tour of the uh, Pafuri picnic spot. Well worth coming to.
As we arrive back in camp, we can reflect upon a good day out, which has been more about the scenery than the wildlife, and a totally different experience to the rest of the park. It's been quite windy all day, and the wind is picking up even more now. Let's hope the flapping of the canvas doesn't keep us awake all night. The day started off quite grey so after a late start we decided just to do the local loops.
that many uh, roads around Punta Maria, so this morning we did the Mahoney Loop, which sort of wends its way around the camp for about 25 kilometres. Even driving slowly, it only takes an hour and a half, so we were back at camp fairly soon. We decided to have a fairly lazy day as the uh, grey morning gave way to sunshine, but it's been quite rewarding. We've seen quite a few birds from the deck of our tent, and I've just spent an hour down the waterhole filming kudu and baboons. Well worthwhile.
by the afternoon it brightened up quite considerably so we decided to go out for one more drive although to be honest we didn't expect to see very much After a fairly quiet drive, we arrived back at the camp just as the sun was setting. All that remained for the day was to sit back at the tent and watch as the sun went down. <laughs> 